find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. I'm hungry, spark, but I ain't starving yet. Jane for the pain, cocktail, dollar set. Never said I was a gangster or a thug, but I'm an animal. Peanut for the taste of the pie. Hey guys, it's the Indie Mayhem Show. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter. We're ready to go here. Uh, of course, I'm a video editor here in the uh, Pittsburgh area. I work at the International Wrestling Cartel and the Renegade Wrestling Alliance. Uh, that will come back once the snow melts, apparently, as we'll uh, probably talk about some cancellations later in the show. With me on the line, as usual, he is the voice of Inspire Pro Wrestling, bright and bushy-tailed right there. And he's aiming at <laughs> that aiming too, please, on the Twitters. The hair is still doing amazing things, folks. I, I gotta keep it, gotta keep it amazing. Um, yeah, I'm doing great. So, how are you? Awesome, awesome. And uh, we're gonna have a talk with Jazz Kumar, the uh, the a uh, uh, great graphics person for Renegade Wrestling Alliance, Iron Skull Productions, and I uh, will gonna pick his brain a little bit about uh, that. But first, please go check out everything at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Subscribe to the Indie Mayhem Show on iHeartRadio, Stitcher, Spreaker, iTunes, wherever you get your podcast. If it's not there, let us know. We'll put it there. If you stumble it on us somewhere else, and of course, YouTube and all the other places, or drop us a line. Let us know what you think about uh, the people we've had on, the people we should have on, questions if we've announced the uh, guest for the week, and any other indie wrestling news and thoughts you may have, 412-206-WMS0, or good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. And we're have some guests here oh, joining us in the second half, but first, let's get that interview. Hi guys, coming at you uh, from the future here, where things didn't work out so well. Uh, so our, our friend Jazz, Iron School Productions, uh there were some family issues in between the time zone and everything so we weren't able to line up the interview as we as we hoped and we had pre-recorded all the rest of this awesome conversation that's coming up so i i want to get that out there because it's a little more timely so unfortunately no interview this week but i want to take a moment to kind of put over jazz and why i wanted him on the show here and we'll try to get caught up with him here in the, in the coming weeks so i apologize for that uh, but we're about to have a really cool conversation about uh, about Triple H being at Evolve and everything going on there. And Alex is going to tell us about about Chikara and all kinds of cool stuff like that. Okay, so I do want to get to that. But but Jazz is a uh, part of Iron Skull Productions, and um, and, and it's really cool because uh, he, among the promotions that he does, uh, he does the uh, artwork and flyers and everything for Renegade Wrestling Alliance. And it's been a really big thing over the last uh, probably year and a half that he's been working with us that really kind of ups the vision of uh, what's going on there. I mean, I mean, RWA, you know, on, on the surface and they've been doing stuff to kind of make things look a little better and, and work on that vision. Uh, when you look at the promotion on, on video and everything. Um, but one of the big things to have is like that really kick ass cover to be very attractive. And, and, and I, I can think that, that, that leads to uh, some of the things that have happened in a year and a half, uh, including, you know, something catching the eye between that and the the matches happening on that card. Uh, that that I've seen more of those uh, being sold internationally, even, uh, and, and I think that's really cool to see. Uh, you know, again, kind of lends to the conversation we have very often on the show about kind of the presentation that that indies that have little to no money um, finding good talented people to be involved with it. Uh, you know, for whether whatever agreement to to. You know, make it seem and feel bigger and look bigger than than it actually is uh, to, to, you know, get in front of more people. And I think that's really, really important. So do a quick Google search. Look up Iron Skull Productions. Uh, hit up Jazz. Uh, let, him, let him know you heard about him over here on the Indie Mayhem Show. Like I said, in the future, we're going to catch up with him and uh, hopefully sit him down and have some interview time. And uh, just, like I said, uh, uh, best to him. Hope everything's uh, going well. Again, you know, some family stuff uh, came up. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, and that's fine, you know, uh, so hit them up, Iron Skull Productions. Uh, now we're going to go back in time. We're going to, so it doesn't get too weird. Uh, we're going to take a look at something from our 10 year party for our wrestling mayhem show. And when we come back, uh, Eamon and I are going to say really weird things as if this interview had happened because we're trying to make it look like it actually happened. Uh, so ignore that part, get to the conversation and, uh, thanks everybody for enjoying the show. Just wait, just wait. Wait Not me. I mean, I don't want to use a weapon. It's it's more I could see Eamon just busting out a knife, and uh, and 
just cutting Mad Mike in every orifice he has. Steam Machine would have merged Victorious from the uh, Mayhem Show Royal Rumble because he has the most unbridled rage that I've ever seen on the show. And LB can get mad. Me, by far. I'm a Hall of Famer, so I would win. Uh, because I take after uh, Edge, and I am the ultimate opportunist. So, of course I would win. And I wouldn't be tired at the end either. And then afterwards, there would be a live sex celebration. Just like Edge. I, fi I figure we've all hit each other enough with enough objects that it would just kind of be a draw. We would just kind of beat each other until we were all drunk and laying around on the mat. I'm gonna say wheels because everyone's gonna feel bad about throwing him out. You really don't know this crew. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> One of the weekly features, of course. Chad probably said himself. So I'm gonna go with Dave. Dr. Doc Remedy. Loki with the robo leg. Riz would emerge victorious because he has had the most practice on the video game. I would say me. I'm the wrestler of the year, te technically, and I have a championship belt. And that's not what they can say, but that's what I can say. I would say Doc Remedy, just from the fact that I, I don't know, I feel like he'd do anything he could to win. I would say uh, the winner of the Royal Rumble would probably be Missy, Missy Sorg, because um, She's a force of nature, and no one is going to fuck with her. <laughs> I would say Veronica. I got chopped in a line by everyone on the Mayhem show. The one that I believe I still have a handprint under my Wrestling Mayhem show t-shirt is from Veronica. And if anyone, if she got anyone in a corner, one chop, they'd fly over the top rope. We are back, and there was a little bit about uh, what if we had a Mayhem Rumble. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Some stuff we filmed at the 10-year anniversary party over at our friends looking for group here in the Pittsburgh area out in the Brookline neighborhood. Check them out, lfgpgh.com, if you want to find out more about what they're doing over there. And we're just a fan of video games in general. and see what the hell a looking for group is. But, uh, but Eamon is with me back again, of course. Uh, and I hope you really enjoyed that interview, Eamon. Yeah, it was really fantastic. I uh, really, really get to talk to Jazz and kind of because it's. I, I think we kind of you know talking to indie wrestlers and stuff like that. It's cool to get a side of things that's you know, you know, and more of the production side. I always like those kind of interviews. You know? Awesome, awesome. Well, I got we got a crew with us. Uh, first, real quick, some introductions. First of all, he was uh, over with us when the Mayhem Mania over at Wrestling Mayhem Show uh, uh, five hundred four. We're recording this evening. Uh, he is Alex Cars. He's of Chikara in fifteen dot com, uh, the great podcast uh, celebrating Chikara. I want to talk about a little bit of Chikara in a few minutes here. Uh, how you doing tonight, Alex? Uh, from the uh, from the left coast today. Doing good. I'm doing good. Uh, got to take a break from working and living up on the mountain, and uh, here tonight to talk a little bit about Chikara and stuff. It's great. Awesome. Awesome. And also with us, he's the guy we talk about him week to week here. Uh, he's the writer of the Around the Indies uh, column over on IndieWrestling.us. Some great stuff we've been pulling together. Keeps me informed on what the heck's going on out there because there's so much happening. Uh, Matt Carlin's Mainstream Matt on the tweeters is joining us. How you doing, Sorg? Hey. So hey. I, I, I want to talk about because the big news um, from this past week has been this picture that's going around. And uh, if I get this thing queued up, appropriately here it is nope that's not it uh but no this picture going around I, I you guys have probably all seen it on your boards on the news wherever wherever find find uh indie wrestling news is sold uh but uh this picture of triple h and gabe sapolsky at an evolve show peeking through the curtain checking things out uh, of course you know there's the nxt kind of um agreement of some sort with evolve and uh, there were some NXT stars there. Obviously, some some of their their guys like Johnny Gargano are popping up in uh, NXT currently. Uh, this, it, this feels to me like a WWE ECW working agreement, but more transparent. You know, in the world of social media, um, mm -hmm. I don't. Is there any other news coming out of this other than this this foreboding picture? You know, uh, does anybody know any details from from the the event itself, or you know, does it seem promising to you guys? What's going on here? Well, I know um, it was obviously an extension of some of the stuff they've been working together. I know at the event they had uh, William Regal make an appearance. He nice. did a, 
uh, sort of an in-ring segment with uh, the Evolve champion, Timothy Thatcher. Um, and I know American Alpha were also there to sign out of Um Yeah, I think this was just extremely interesting in the fact that, you know, this is the lead guy right now, in, in not just NXT, but, but, you know, pretty lead in WWE as well, um, you know, at an indie show. Like, the, like to imagine somebody on the level of Triple H being at, like, an indie show of that, you know, size and caliber is interesting. Um, and I think it's like you said, like it's a, kind of almost like a WWE ECW style relationship. But uh, you know, if you know that happened in 2016 instead of 1996 or 97, you know, maybe we would have been seeing more of you know what actually went on. Um, yeah, I, I I think it's really cool. I, I, it's the and it's not I'm not saying this to use a turn of phrase, but the evolution, so to speak, of um, of uh, you know wrestling in general. Uh, uh, I got to do an interview recently about sort of the state of indie wrestling for a, 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 a different podcast. Uh, and um, to feel, feel free like to plug them. No, feel free to plug them so people can check it out. Oh, uh, there, uh, I, there were, uh, God, now, now I feel bad because I don't remember anything. But it's a, it's a uh, local Austin, Texas uh, 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 wrestling podcast that okay. talks about uh, sort of the Texas area. Well, we'll, t- um, but we'll they, tweet it later. I'll, I'll have to tweet it later. I, feel bad for missing it. Um, but uh, um, the fact that like in 2006, 2007, when I first got into the wrestling, that kind of wasn't a cool thing. And it was, you know, oh, I don't know who these guys are. Why should I care about these guys? You know, doesn't matter. You know, why should I know who these people are? And now you have to. Now you have to know who these people are. Now you have to follow them. Now it's the cool thing to follow them. And um, that's good to see. Um, but yeah. I, I think that it's just really cool to see that uh, going in 2016. Certainly, certainly. Well, well, what about you, Carlin? You, 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 you had uh, some thoughts in this, in, in, you know, covering this, and you, you dug, you dug the picture up. Uh, what were your thoughts uh, when you when you got to see that? Weird, just weird, and and, and photoshopped unlimited photoshops on this picture. Also, Sorg. I don't know if you had a chance to no sample all of those things going on. Well, they've they've gotten folks have, are having fun with this picture now, and they've they've decided it's lots of fun to put instead of like a gymnasium, you could Photoshop anything you want in between that curtain that Triple H and Gabe are peering out at. So it's like I don't know, it's it's like it's, I think someone actually Photoshopped Triple H winning the Royal Rumble between the curtain, and like Triple H is watching himself win. But I've also seen a picture of Triple H like doing the NXT backstage pose with himself after the, and it's ridiculous stuff. Um, we're supposed to be talking about independent wrestling. So I don't know if I'm getting off on that tangent, but it's, it's weird. And, um, there's always been a part of me that wonders. Um, I mean, we, we, we hear a lot about, um, people who are scouting for talent for WWE and how William Regal is out there uh, is one of those guys who's out there a lot. Um, looking at some of the talent who are on their way up. Um, so I guess you never really know who's watching now. I guess maybe that's the message to, to maybe all independent wrestlers is that uh, no matter where you are, um, Triple H may be peering out at you from behind a curtain backstage. And, uh, you know, maybe it's your, uh, it's your time to shine. I, I, for, for me, I mean, does this guy, does this whole relationship kind of change your change, how you feel about evolve as far as like, like, is it, if it, it, and not understanding entirely what the relationship is and all the details are, like how Evolve and WWE are intertwined right now, or even if it's just kind of a handshake agreement, but this is kind of like, does it separate them from the pack of the, of the rest of the indies? Does it put them in like some sort of middle ground where they're up, you know, above the indies, but not quite? ROH or something like that. Like, how do you guys feel about like where Evolve has positioned itself now? Well, personally, I I feel that it's a case of they, you know, Evolve has the talent level of an of a Ring of Honor without the competition factor. Um, you know, they're you know doing eye pay per views and they're running sort of smaller than like Evolve doesn't necessarily draw gigantically. I mean, they do well for themselves, obviously, but. They're not on the level of a Ring of Honor as far as notoriety, as far as, you know, um, uh, stuff like that goes. 
Um, you know, so I think that's one of the main reasons the relationship happened in the first place is that, you know, they don't have to worry about Evolve being a competitor, so to speak. Uh, but there is that wealth of talent that is there. Um, I, I think that, yeah, I think, um, you know, it could really have happened with any indie, but if you, it just really does come to the talent level that's right now for, you know, Evolve Wrestling. Um, you know, the, the, and also location wise, the mainly kind of home base WWL is based out of Florida. So, um, I think that also plays a factor. So, um, but Hey, you know, I, I think good for good on them. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I think it makes you wonder, like, okay, is this going to be the feeding gap? Is this the NXT to the NXT to look at talent? Because, you know, Gabe, I think, has a good good eye for talent uh, over the years, you know, seeing his years with Ring of Honor to to what Evolve does. And again, Evolve doesn't seem like it's, it's, it's not outwardly, you know, it's not accessible to me, you know? Like, it, I feel, uh, like, like other feds may be. Uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm not ready to sink a bunch of money into it to check out what they're doing, right? Uh, but does this mean, like, I mean, these are this is a group that's done, you know, with uh, uh, the WW, WWN network, the live network, yeah. where they've done eye pay per views for a while. Maybe they're doing something there, and the WWE's like, well, hey, they got X on their own doing this. If we put, you know, a minimal amount of money into them, what could we do? Would we have another brand for the network? You know, it may be, maybe they're auditioning for something like that. And now there's another brand on top of NXT where something completely different is happening. You know, it, maybe. Who knows? Who knows? This is NXT has become the thing that the brand split was supposed to be. Yeah, I, I, I think NXT is almost like. I, I don't want to say WWE is surprised by what happened with NXT, but when I, when I think about Evolve now and it kind of almost is almost a little bit like FCW was where you kind of, you knew what FCW was doing. You knew it was doing good stuff, but you had to really try to, to and seek out um, FCW to see some of those matches. And it evolves kind of the same way, even though the technology has gotten a lot of better. And uh, certainly if you're willing to fork over a, a little bit of cash, you can watch their eye pay reviews and things like that. Mm -hmm. But perhaps from WWE's perspective, they need, something to fill the void of what NXT was supposed to be until it got too big to the point where they have to kind of unleash it a little bit um, while they're still doing some of their armory and social hall shows down there in Florida with the, uh, with the B team, so to speak. Yeah. 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 Alex, what are your thoughts on this? Um, well, yeah, I, I generally agree with you guys on it. I was, you know, it's, it's just funny because like, I can't, like, I guess mostly I'm just happy for for Gabe and the guys that evolved. Because, like, I remember, like, I remember, like, when they were first doing Evolve shows. Because um, the thing about this was that they were, like, because Evolve was, I'm trying to think of a good way to put it. Because originally it was whole, a whole thing about there being the Evolve brand and then the Dragon Gate USA brand, which in the last year or so has been kind of quietly quietly faded away but uh the actual like the evolved brand itself has been interesting to see again go if you you know to put it in a cliche of sorts the evolution of that brand has been very interesting because it started out with you know like the point system and there was no like evolved title and just the growth of the company itself and so But yeah, I, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. Um, and so, like, just in general, like the, it's just really great to see the the company kind of at the point where they're at now, where they're having kind of this working relationship with WWE with NXT in particular. Because um, I was just thinking, it, it also does take me back, kind of what Sorg was saying, take me back to stuff like, you know, stuff like OVW back in like the early two thousands where you see, like, kind of, you know, these stars before they were stars. And it's even, like, the little things, like, a WWE.com article on, like, the top five stars that evolved. Mm -hmm. Stuff like that yeah. is just amazing to me. Yeah, yeah definitely. Well, it, it will, it's, it'll be interesting. We'll see how this goes and, and where, where this goes uh, from here. 
Uh, but uh, hey, you know, there's other feds, and we kind of teased it. The idea of what if there was a Chikara invasion over on Wrestling Mayhem show uh, mm-hmm. for some debuts. I think that was around our big question this week. Uh, we got the guy that's uh, that's in the know uh, uh, of Chikara uh, covering it uh, uh, from all the angles. Chikara in 15. Uh, Alice, can you give me just you know a quick kind of preview? You know, we, we you've been on the show I think before talking. We, we talked a lot about how. Uh, 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 the last season ended with Bryce, Bryce Remsburg and everything. Uh, yeah. What are the expectations? What are the vibes going into uh, this weekend's uh, uh, big series of events uh, for the promotion? Well, it, it's interesting because kind of something, because the first thing, like when you go to the events page on ChikaraPro.com, the first thing you see for season 16 is kind of what uh, Bryce touched upon the last time we talked to him was the idea of, like, the Wrestle Factory, the new Wrestle Factory over in Philadelphia, being more of a home base. And it's been very interesting, because, like, when you look at the events page, it's basically, like, a lot of events are at the new Wrestle Factory this year. Um, And so, kind of heading into this weekend, um, another theme that you'll see throughout the events already scheduled for this season are lots of double shots and almost triple shots in some cases, but this weekend uh, is a double trot at the new Wrestle Factory uh, in Philadelphia. Uh, the first show is at 2 p.m. Uh, Eastern Time. Uh, so a nice afternoon matinee show, if you will, uh, with Days of the Phoenix. And then at 7 p.m. Eastern, I believe it is, is uh, Five Senses. So there's a, there's a lot already kind of happening with the... the uh, Shows to kind of start off the season. Awesome, awesome, and uh, I mean, you know, we we you know we have you know some pretty int- you know fun news with uh, Princess Kimberly as the uh, mm-hmm. the uh, the the main champion and everything. Um, any expectations? Like, are are, are there any uh, big names coming through, or, or are we just kind of uh, uh, seeing the characters evolve? And I hate using that word again uh, concerning today's news. <laughs> uh, you know. Oh. Um, or more of the yeah. same uh, awesome uh, 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 Chikara action. Yeah, I, you know, it's like I think one of the big interesting things is obviously like uh, we have uh, last season we had the challenge of the immortals, and while it's generally agreed that maybe you know they won't necessarily go to that length, that depth of of that kind of thing for a little while, you still actually see some stuff that kind of come out. The other end of the challenge of the immortals. Um, mm-hmm. For example, one of the uh, one of the matches in the evening show Five Senses is the trio of Ophidian, and Argus and Shinron, uh, who were teaming together as the Snake Pit during the challenge of the immortals, taking on the newly reformed uh, colony of Fire Ant, Worker Ant, and Silver Ant. That's one of the big stories that kind of came out of that was basically uh, Soldier Ant, you know who had been previously basically feuding with the colony, uh, basically remembered who he was in a sense. And so you kind of have all four of those guys in the colony coming back together. And so, you know, one of the stories of Challenge of the Immortals was the colony being split because of the, the, the draft and everything. So it's cool to see them together. And so just stuff like that. So other than that, yeah, it's going to be very interesting, to say the least, kind of uh, see where things go. Also, uh, um, let's see. Oh, and on the afternoon show, the tag titles, the Campeonatos de Pereas are being defended. NRG defends against the Nightmare Warriors of Hollow Wicked and Frightmare. And Nightmare Warriors obviously being the, the Challenge of the Immortals team from last year. Uh, so it seems that maybe that's the name that they're kind of settling on for... The, like, their tag team and all that. So, yeah, just stuff from some of those things from last season kind of come into play as the season begins. So, it's, needless to say, it's going to be very interesting to see what happens uh, now that we're coming off the other end of of something as crazy as Challenging the Immortals. Awesome. Uh, Eamon, I know you're the one that kind of kept, kept me in uh, in line of what's going on, and especially in the that off season that they had. Uh, what are you mm-hmm. looking for with Shakara this year? Um, I think it's going to be a really interesting season. Um, uh, obviously, the Challenge of the Immortals, uh, uh, while I think definitely a success, especially uh, when it came to the ending of that, 
entire tournament. Um, definitely took up a majority of season, of season 15. Um, I'd like to see how they're going forward and, and to see, you know, there's some new alignments now coming off of Challenge of the Immortals. Some teams who, you know, were split up from Challenge of the, because of Challenge of the Immortals kind of getting back together. Um, you know, uh, yeah, I'm excited going forward, especially with, you know, Princess Kimberly as Chicago Grand Champion. Um, I think she's got a very interesting run ahead of, ahead of her, hopefully. Um, uh, her first defense, and it will be against the Oleg Usurper. Um, and I'm very excited to see what comes with her uh, as Chikara Grand Champion. And I, I'm very hopeful because Chikara's, you know, um, uh, history with, you know, intergender wrestling and, and utilizing female competitors has been very stellar. So I'm very excited to see uh, what she does as a Grand Champion. Awesome. Awesome. All right. And from there, of course, around the Indies, I, I think it looks like it was uh, first peak I'm looking at this. It looks like you were uh, uh, mostly uh, evolved news uh, from that big weekend here. Anything else yeah. sticking out from the weekend uh, 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 of Indies here? Swordman, the Indies got snowed out this weekend. Um, and it, in fact, we um, it's actually kind of a bummer. Um, you know, every weekend we're, we're trying to compile all this awesome stuff from around the Indies. And usually it is a jam-packed fiesta of awesomeness. And all these shows just got uh, knocked off. I mean, I know around here in the Pittsburgh area, uh, the International Wrestling Cartel and the Renegade Wrestling Alliance had to postpone their shows. I know Maryland Championship Wrestling had to postpone their show. And there's shows further east. Uh, I'm trying to remember some of those, uh, some of their letters, but I can't because there are so many. But a lot of shows got disrupted by the, uh, by the big winter snowstorm that blew through over the weekend. Um, and hopefully they can get these things rescheduled, but I'm sure next week will be jam packed. But until then, just go check out around the Indies and, uh, check out some of the outstanding action. Just a little sample, not too much. You know, we're not here to, we're not here to, uh, steal the eye pay-per-view buys from, uh, Evolve. So just give you a little sample, give you a little, uh, a taste of the action, a few pictures, a few bids, and, uh, a couple other shows of, uh, of note that went on over the weekend. So check those out at around the Indies and, uh, check out some of the stuff that's going on, um, over the past few weeks or so, because this was an awesome stuff. Highest recommendation uh, to check out uh, Mr. Connor Braxton and his hoverboard that is taking the Indies by storm. By storm. I can't and say it, enough about him. And there was debate because people are getting mad about the hoverboard call out. So, eh, whatever. <laughs> All right, guys, if that's everything, hey, thanks everybody for joining us. Thank you, Jess, for joining us for the interview here in the Mayhem Show. Uh, let us know any Indies that you think we haven't covered, that we need to, what needs to be on the list for. For, for, for Matt to keep, keep an eye on and everything else uh, so much. Thank you so much, uh, Mainstream Matt on the Twitters. And check out his columns again, IndieWrestling.us. And also some stuff over at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. He's been an awesome help to us over there as well. And, of course, uh, uh, Alex Cars, uh, Chikarin15.com. What else do you want to plug there? Um, well, kind of related to that, uh, I mentioned on uh, Wrestling Mayhem Show. But this later this week, I intend on uh, getting the recordings done for the return of Chikara on 15, just in time for the season 16 premiere. And I'm also recording the Chikara 101 season 15 awards, uh, which were voted on by the 101 forum community. And so it was a lot of fun to see the votes coming in for that, uh, especially for best blogger. Uh, I'll get more into that uh, with the award show itself. Um, and so, yeah, those, those shows are going to be recorded this week and it's, it's going to be good to get back on the swing of things with Chikara. Awesome. And of course, Eamon Payton, the voice of Inspire Pro Wrestling. Check out everything going on there, inspireprowrestling.com. Yes, indeed. Uh, just releasing some matches and stuff for our February 28th event right now on Twitter and Facebook. So, uh, be sure to follow us, uh, cause I'm sure more announcements will be rolling out this week, uh, regarding that event. So. Awesome. And of course, uh, please check out over at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. We got a listing for uh, the Indie Mayhem Show interview of the year. We have a few kind of select ones in there. Uh, some of uh, the ones that kind of came to mind that I think people be, would have been into from this past year. But if there's an interview that's not listed there uh, in 2015 for for this show, uh, basically uh, around about episode 51 through 100, anybody you want to select through there, uh, go over to WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Uh, click any of those links for uh, uh, May the Mayhemies 
2016. Get your picks in there for main wrestling and also check out uh, the videos that we had put together. Uh, we sat down with uh, some of the great minds in indie wrestling. Joe Dombrowski of the Montreal Theory, uh, Justin Plummer, promoter for the International Wrestling Cartel, and Chris LaRusso, 10-year veteran and, and popping up, of course, also in uh, uh, Ring of Honor. Uh, give their thoughts on the wrestling world in general and their nominees for you to vote on. And you can write in your own if you don't agree with what they had to say. So go check it out, WrestlingMayhemShow.com, and check out everything else. Subscribe to the shows, 412-206-WMS0, good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Thank you, everybody. Support all of our friends that are, have been on the show here, uh, interviews, or, or, or just talking indies with us like, like these guys have this evening. And please, above all, also, support indie wrestling. Show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.